Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we are looking into an article. We did a whole bunch of trade stuff. Now we're looking at free agent stuff. I'm looking at an article from Bleacher Report that talks about every team's toughest free agent signing in the off season. And uh, I thought it was really cool. So I haven't read anything. I have read five of them because I think it was five or six. We did up to uh, Colorado last time, finished on Caudry. We're going to find out what the next five or six are going to be because I don't know either. I'm just doing this totally on the fly. Uh, going to look at the player, say my piece, comment up or sub up to my channel. So you can comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about each player, how much they're, uh, should the team sign them, should they not sign them, how much, for how long, the term, and all of those sort of things like that. It's all part of the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Also, the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the four major sports and all things to do with those four major sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Come sub up. You can be part of the Pearl of Wisdom show that I do randomly throughout the week. When I feel like at a clock and I do live streams and all kinds of stuff like that. So come join. All right. We finished at Colorado. Now we're going to go to the next one. Let's take a look. There we go. That's the uh, that's the article. It's from Bleacher Report, as I said, and every NHL team's toughest free agent decision. We looked at Anaheim. We looked at Kraus, Bergeron. I I shouldn't tell you this. You're not going to watch my other one, but I wanted you to see that Tony D'Angelo from Carolina, and we finished off at Colorado. Now we're at Patrick. Lion A. Crazy talent of Patrick Lion A. And he is on a rest he's a restricted free agent. They have to give him a qualifying offer. And he's on uh, what he made 7.5 last year. So in order to sign him for a long time. Uh, they're going to have to give them over $8 million a year. Now, they could feasibly sign them to a contract that lessens that over the term, but I just get the feeling that Mr. Lion is not going to like that idea at all. Okay. Um, the, it says even says in the article that People making that kind of money should make should produce more than Lion A does. But numbers wise, I can't say that I agree with that. He fifty three. He's a point a game winger at twenty three years old. You know, on a full season, if he played a full season, he had some issues there with. Uh, uh, Oblique or something. It was a weird injury, a little bit concerning that he didn't sound like serious, but I, I don't know. I'm not a doctor because they, they use the word strain. You never like to hear the word strain, oblique strain. I didn't understand what that was, but uh, he, anyways, he's on a 40 goal pace, dude. So they have control. They got to give him at least around eight, eight and a half. And then sign them long term if they want at eight and a half million dollars a year. Now, if they were to do that and he keeps up that production, it's probably worth it. What am I trying to say that I'm not saying here? What does everybody know uh, think about Lion A really? Tell me what you think, Columbus Blue Jacket fans. Sub yourself up. He's a bit of an enigma. He's not a very good defensive player. He doesn't even sound like he cares that he's not a good defensive player. 
He had issues in Winnipeg with uh, brass management, players, um, which, by the way, sounds like it, well, he wasn't too far off from being the truth about. Like, he kind of was talking about it, but there does look to be problems in Winnipeg as far as in the room and stuff like that is concerned. And he was going to almost basically outrightly say that they uh, they take care of Shifley and Wheeler over there in Winnipeg, and he was left out in the cold, and he was tired of it, in his own words. And he came to Columbus. He says he's very happy in Columbus now. So what are they going to do? My thinking is, and you can, I think they're going to give him eight point five for a long term, as long as he's willing to take that. Why is it there's something in me? That makes me think that he's going to overvalue himself. That's it. The Lion is going to overvalue himself. I could be wrong. Players who earn eight, more than $8 million a season generally have greater on-ice impacts than that. He's a defensive sieve, yes. His offense is in top 10 percentile, his defense is bottom 10. That's true. So what do you give him? What do you give him? I, I, I think they I think they're going to give him eight point five. He's too exciting of a player. Columbus is desperate to bring people into the seats. He brings people to the seats. His shot is amazing. They'll find a center that can play both ways for him. Not to mention, it seems like in Columbus they want to play a high impact offensive game. I think they're going to give him eight point five for eight years. That's what I think. Set it. Okay, let's move on to the next one. John Klingberg. Tough? Yeah. I mean, they're not going to sign him. He doesn't want to be there. I um, I don't know if the, he doesn't feel appreciated. And generally, when a player says that, he's been unhappy with the negotiations. It's because of money. So he doesn't feel appreciated because of the amount of money that they're willing to offer him. And not only that, honestly, if I'm him, there doesn't seem to be all that much future in Dallas, but players don't generally see that. They think that, you know, their team is going to be great. They always think that way. They're never going to think otherwise. Uh, it's just they, he doesn't feel like he's appreciated. He wanted to be traded at the deadline. They didn't trade him at the deadline. So now Dallas will possibly trade his rights to somebody, assuming they want to give him eight years, though. Like, are they really going to give him eight years? A, a, a team out there? Let's look at Klingberg's numbers and see. Uh, but Dallas is sure not signing him. So they clear some cap space. So they'll take their younger players that they have there. They got a couple guys like Harley coming up that, you know, can take that spot, I suppose. And honestly, I'm not the hugest Klingberg guy myself. He's not very good defensively. His offense has been declining, 43 points in 65 games. It's okay, 36, 32. So it's not really declining, is it? It's about the same. It hasn't improved. It's the same as it was in 2019. He's the same poor defensive player he always had, was. So to me, it's not a spec he's not a spectacular player. He goes on the open market, though, and somebody might think that he is. I don't blame Dallas for not ponying up huge money for him. At $4.5 million, honestly, for me, that's all I want to spend on a guy like Klingberg. That's it. He's like Tyson Berry to me, maybe a little better. Four and a half, maybe five for a couple years. And if he goes on the open market, up here, teams always overpay. Somebody will surprise you. I heard Montreal was interested. They're going to pony up six, seven million for Klingberg. I think it's a big mistake. Dallas fans, what do you think? What do you think, Dallas fans? You think they should pony up seven million or whatever? Well, they're not, anyways, because it sounds like he's already offended. And that's the other thing that has me kind of uh, the red flag, where you're so offended by a contract negotiation that you want to get traded at the deadline in the team that's trying to make the playoffs. I, I don't like his attitude. I wouldn't have him, but maybe somebody else out there might think otherwise. 
Sub yourself up, Dallas, Dallas fans. If you agree or disagree, comment in my comment section and tell me what you guys think about that. All right, next. Red Wings, Philippe Zadina. Now, what do you do with Zadina? He just has not been... Uh, he has not been what they thought he would. He, he said earlier, I, yeah, when he got drafted, they brought this up in the article, that I was telling my agent that if they pass on me, I'm going to fill their nets with the puck. So he sounded like a really confident kid. But apparently he beats himself up a lot. He makes mistakes and he gets down on himself and then he plays poorly for game upon game. And now it says here that Steve Eisman has a complicated but fascinating decision to make for a player who's billed as a goal scorer, as it says, has done virtually none of that during his NHL career so far. Yeah. And he's not even that great defensively either. It's, uh, it's not very good. And he's got a contract coming up. So what exactly is Sedina going to be worth? Well, they hold all the cards. My inkling is, is that he's just going to give them a, uh, he's a restricted free agent. They hold all the cards. Um, they don't need to worry about cap space. But, yeah, I mean, you're not paying the guy. He's coming off his first contract. Eight point nine five. He had eight hundred fifty thousand in player bonuses. I don't know if he hit them because they don't tell you what they are. But twenty one points in sixty nine games is the best he's had. It's a career year, and it wasn't even that great. So, qualifying offer would be all I'd offer for another year or two. Show me, and if he doesn't pan out, you trade him. That uh, it's pretty simple. There's you know, no way they're going to give him a long term contract there. No way, I don't think. Detroit fans, what do you think? Should they sign him? Should they? I mean, trading him now, what are you going to get from him? He's like a top end pick, and he's only twenty two years old. When your best luck, best chance be to give him more rope, and hopefully he gets to grow out of whatever it is that's causing him the problems. I would think so. Uh, next, Edmonton Oilers, Miko Koskinen. Yeah, they don't really have all that difficult of uh, contracts, but I was surprised. Like I said, I never saw this before. Miko Koskinen. Uh, as a UFA, I, I, I think they're letting them go. I don't know what's complicated about this. Uh, they're just not going to sign them. I, I don't see why you would sign them. Choice to make whether or not to keep Koskin in, in Edmonton, except for the fact that they can't find another goaltender out there. Almost like like what happened when they signed Smith. That would be the only reason why I would consider signing Koskin in. And I know fans in Edmonton, because I live in Edmonton, they will lose their mind if they sign this guy again. He he was good later on in the season, but he's 33 years old. He's making four and a half million. I don't think he's going to see that number again, but they got to get better than that. They got to get better than that. He's probably going to get about two and a half million. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that that was the one that they picked here about tough contract. What about Jesse Puglia Harvey? He, he, if, if they look at analytics at all, he's been their best defensive player on the, on the team. And, uh, Kaylor Yamamoto is not as good, uh, defensively, but he put up a pretty solid offensive season. I'd say those are the more difficult ones that I would look at as to how much they're going to offer. But they do hold all the cards. It's almost certainly going to be a bridge deal. They'll want a bridge deal as well. So tell me what you think, Oilers fans. I'm pretty sure all of you maybe say otherwise. If not, first of all, sub up, comment in the comment section. Get yourself subbed up to my channel because I do this stuff all the time. Tell me, do you think they should re-sign Koskinen for less or just, you know, maybe if they can't find any goaltender out there at all. And how much did you give Pugliarvi Yamamoto? I'll throw it in your hands. I have a feeling they're going to make two and a half to three million for a couple of years each, which is going to be tough because they're capped out. So that would mean Evander Kane doesn't come back. Uh, 
Archibald probably not. There's not much cap space to be signing these young guys. Eight million dollars in cap space, and they got to sign a goaltender if they don't sign Koskinen. Those two guys, and that's about all they can do. So, what do you think, guys? Oilers fans, tell me what. Tell me, uh, did you sign Koskinen? Who do you get for a goaltender if you sign those two? Who goes out the door so you can make room? I know you're going to say Cassian, but can, do you think anybody's going to take Cassian? I'm not so sure about that. I'm sure I'd love to get rid of Barry. You think anybody's going to take Barry at four and a half million? He's making Klingberg type money uh, right now, and he's certainly not that. He's not even as good as Klingberg. He's making four and a half million dollars a year. I mean, maybe you might be able to pawn him off on somebody. I mean, somebody pawned off Duncan Keith on, on us for the Oilers, so crazier things have happened, but I just don't see it. A lot of work to do and not much money to do it with, but I think you've got to sign Fully RV and Yamamoto, and then you take care of the rest afterwards. Okay, Oilers fans, tell me what you think, or anybody fans out there. Finally, Ben Chirot, and uh, for the Florida Panthers is next. One, two, three. Ben Chirot. Okay, I'll do one more after this. Um, are they going to sign him after this? I think they're going to want to. I think he's overrated, but a lot of people don't. He is one of the most difficult valuations you can. And if you look at analytics at all, you don't sign Ben Chirot to more than two, two and a half million dollars a year. If if you look at a big guy that can skate and hit, and you know, the eye test, he blocks shots, he does all of those sort of things like that that looks really good on the eye. But if you actually pay attention to his hitting, he quite often puts himself out of position. He gets behind the play a lot. He pinches poorly. But that being said, he's a UFA almost Almost for sure, there's a team out there that's going to give him four and a half to five million dollars a year. If it's me, I ain't doing it. Florida fans, what do you think? Four and a half, five million dollars a year for Sherratt? I mean, kind of a slap of the face to Gustav Forsling, who's a way better defenseman than him. Uh, Gudas is maybe as good, and he's getting two and a half. Mackenzie Weger's way better. You got to sign him down the road. I wouldn't do it, but tell me what you guys think out there. Would you sign him to more than that? If, in fact, he wants to sign, he may get to go check the market. And like you said, you get $5 million, then it's up to you. What would you do, Florida fans? Would you keep him or not? I guess you'll find out after the playoffs. Um, you know, everybody said he was a beast for Montreal in the playoffs. He, that's the thing. His greatest value, Ben Chirot's greatest value, is he does wear down the opposition. And in the playoffs, that is a... That changes the uh, analytics a lot because you help the you help other players and your team when you beat down the opposition, and he sure does that. So maybe that's where the value is. But um, personally, I think he's overrated. Next, L.A. Kings, and what do they say? He settled in wonderfully alongside Mackenzie Weger. Won't have a ton of cap space to play with. That's right. Florida won't have a ton of cap space to play with. I I get the feeling that Bill Zito does look at uh, analytics, and I don't think they're going to sign him. Finally, we'll look at Alexander Edler uh, of the LA Kings. And I say finally because it's going to be finally. We're going to go into, let's see, how much time do I got? Oh, you know what? We can keep on going. Um Edler, I don't think this they, – they obviously don't have too much to sign. I'm not going to talk more about this. You sign Edler to his current $3.5 million cap hit. He's got to get less than that. He is underappreciated. He is good, but he's not that good, and he's injured a lot. I wouldn't sign him to much more than $1.5 million a year, personally, myself. Uh, they got a lot of defensemen coming up. I, I, and they could also find somebody else to fill his role. I don't. I don't think he's. He, I don't think he's irreplaceable. So I would do one point five million. 
What do you guys think, LA fans? Sub yourself up and tell me what you think about signing Edler again. Finally, we'll go Minnesota. Okay, Minnesota with Fiala. I said finally three times. But really, this is finally. Minnesota Wild. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to sign Fiala. Simple as that. They have too much cap space, dead cap space coming up with Zach Parise and Ryan Suter. Uh, as much as they would like to, and as much as I think Fiala would like to stay here, I just don't think he's going to give up as much money as he would have to give up to stay in Minnesota. He's going to be an unrestricted, is he an unrestricted? Oh, he's a restricted free agent. Remember, I'm doing this right on the fly here. So, uh, 5.1. You look at his numbers. Uh, first of all, just look at their cap space for next year. 8 million. You got to sign some guys like Delorier, uh, Tyson Jost, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. Maybe they can fit him in. But I think he's going to be asking for $7.5 million. They can bridge him. Give him a qualifying offer. And if, if they go qualifying offer, they only have to give him one more year. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got Mark andre Fleury coming off the books, I suppose. But then you're going with Cam Talbot. If he signs for, if they sign him long term, he's going to want seven million, something like that, seven seven and a half million, which would be all their cap space, and you know sixty three points in seventy one games for a twenty five year old, he'd be doing well if he got him for seven to seven and a half million for a long term contract. What do you think, Minnesota? Should they should, should they trade them off now? Get some young players because you got Matthew Boldy. That was you know, that's who I was thinking. Of. Matthew Boldy that's going to have to be paid eventually here. Uh, look, let's look at the depth chart and see what they got. Matthew Boldy is 21 years old. He's going to be a restricted free agent in 2023. He's going to command quite a bit. And that's the biggest thing. If you sign Fiala, you now don't have your number one center. You're going to have to hope that Rossi hits it out of the park very soon. And the kid, Rossi's just young, man. Like, he's only 20 years old. Uh, in the minors, he's put in... Under point a game, it's okay. It's probably not NHL ready though. Like signing Fiala would mean that they're really not being serious about being contenders for a while yet. Because I would rather put the money towards a center. They need a center. Uh, Erickson Eck is is a good, solid two way guy. One of the better defensive centers in the league already at 25 years old, but he's not a number one. Ryan Hartman, as good as he plays, he's not a number one. And I have yet, I, I went, tell me when a cup, a team has won a cup without a number one center. That's the thing. If they give it to Fiala, they're not going to be able to give it to, they're not going to be able to sign a number one center. I don't know. I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. And Fiala, if he does do anything with them, if they want to give him $7 million with the numbers he's been putting up, like it, then he'll probably just take a bridge anyways. Since they have control, give him a qualifying offer, or push him up to six for two years, and then he's a free agent, or you can trade him. That's what I think is going to happen there in Minnesota. What do you think, Fiala? What do you think about Fiala? What they should do with them? Should they trade him now? give him his qualifying offer and bring him to free agency, in which case you might have to lose him. Plus, I don't see how you can get the number one center you've been looking for if you do that for now, in which case you're kind of 
never really getting to where you need to be to be a contender in the playoffs, at least for not a, for a couple of years. Is that the plan to just keep on building and then, you know, a three-year plan where you're a super contender because you lose the suitor contract and the Parise contracts and you can pile up your roster and just keep on bringing them draft picks for now? I think that might exactly be actually be where they were, where they could go. Then you would sign Fiala and hope that when he becomes a free agent, you can say, look, we got, we're going to have cap space next year or the year after. Why don't you stick around here? We'll give you this much. I think maybe that's the direction they may be going. What do you guys think, Minnesota fans? Sub up and let me know in the comment section. And uh, I'm going to be back with uh, Montreal and probably Montreal on for my next one, another five or six teams, and we'll look at all the free agents in the land that are difficult to sign. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I got to give today. Watch my previous video where you can see where the other ones were. Comment in the comment section. Sub yourself up. Come to my live stream. I'd love to talk to you. Have a great day. Okay, bye.